don't just live for tomorrow or just live in yesterday just be glad for all you have that's in today and though you've come through many obstacles Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my blind reaction to My Little Pony, Make Your Mark. This is the first of the G5 specials, um, and is a precursor to the Make Your Mark series that is coming. Uh, this follows up the movie, My Little Pony, A, a New Generation, and... I saw one trailer to this, and I will say that I have mixed thoughts going into this. I'm, I'm excited for more Pony, very excited for that, but there's some things that I do take a little issue with. For one, the animation has very clearly taken a massive nosedive. And here's the thing, we knew this was gonna happen because it's like movie is gonna have a bigger budget, it has all these stars in it, they're gonna have a much bigger uh, they're going to have a lot more to work with in that regard. Um, but based on the trailer, at least, and I'll have to see the movie to fully uh, determine, obviously, my full thoughts. But based on the trailer, the animation, like I said, it's taken a nose dive. It's not just worse. It's, like, bad. It looks pretty bad. Not just... Not just lesser than you know than the movie um there's also a new voice cast because they would not be able to bring back the celebrity voices they got for the movie and this is an issue i have with them casting the celebrity voices in the first place it's like okay you're gonna have this movie to introduce us to g5 and you're gonna have all the voice actors played by some pretty big name or all the characters main characters played by some pretty big names with only a couple of in, uh, 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 inclusions or only a couple of exclusions to that um and, and there's a couple that just don't make sense to me why they couldn't have carried over like kimiko glenn as uh as izzy it's like why could she not have reprised her role she's not like this big name hollywood celebrity I mean, she's been in some Hollywood stuff, but she's she's a voice actor. It's like, I feel like they could have gotten her back. But they it almost feels like they wanted to get an entire new cast. And I've heard the cast already in the uh, little animated YouTube shorts. Um, 2D animated YouTube shorts. And they're okay, but they don't have the same depth to their voice acting as the cast from the the movie it's like okay you're not going to give vanessa hudgens or james marsden back um i'll even give you maybe liza koshi even though that one is a little more like why couldn't you get her back it, it, it's it's like a lot of these i could understand ken jong ken jong obviously but some of them that i feel like they could have I really do. Um, it's just the real big names I feel like they couldn't. But it feels like, okay, we're going to replace some of them, so we're just going to replace all of them. That's kind of what it feels like. But the problem with this is it's noticeable. Like, it, if you watch those YouTube shorts like I did, you, you will have noticed it. It's very noticeable. It's not, they're, they're not even, like, they're, they're not, like, super terrible or anything, but... The voicing is it, it. Every character, none of them sound the same. It, it and it's it's not even like oh they're close enough. It's like no they're not. None of them sound anything like they did. And then there's my other concern with how they're being portrayed. Now I know that the YouTube series is a is a series of more comedic themed shorts. And that the creators have already said that the ser that the main series and that the shorts or the specials we're getting are going to be more aligned with the movie, but I'm still concerned because the characters were very in 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 the YouTube shorts were very much 
exaggerated in their personalities. Izzy basically became Pinkie Pie. And and my the fact that it, the fact that Izzy wasn't just a Pinkie Pie clone in the movie impressed me. The fact that she was similar but also stood out as her own character impressed me. But in the short, she basically just became Pinkie Pie. Sunny basically just became Twilight with less neuroticism. It's like they, they, they devolved as characters in the shorts. And I again, they're shorts. They're comedic shorts. And even the creators uh, and showrunners and all said that they weren't going to be on the same level. I get that. But it still gives me concern. And I'm just hoping to be proven wrong. And maybe the animation will prove me wrong too. But that's something that I'm that's the thing I'm most concerned about. Because usually I can I can avoid bad animation if it's if, if the story and characters are all still good. But sometimes there is a point where bad animation gets very distracting. And 3D is mostly where that happens. With 2D, if the animation isn't as great, it's like it's not as noticeable and it's not as distracting. It, you can get past it if the animation isn't as great in 2D. But if it's 3D, it is entirely distracting. I don't know entirely why that is. But it, it can really take your mind off of everything. And I hope that doesn't happen here. I hope that this ends up proving me wrong. But we'll have to see. Um, also to note, I got this on... Or I didn't get this downloaded. We're watching it straight from Netflix because I couldn't find it anywhere. It's not on any of the sites I use. Um, I don't know if that's just because it's a special and not like a, the full series or the movie... I found this, the, the movie plenty on everything, but I couldn't find this. So we're watching it straight off of Netflix, which is like, okay, I, I don't care, fine. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know anything about what the story of this is. I saw like one trailer and it's, I, I wasn't like paying too much attention to like what the story could actually be about it. Um, all I know is that this is going to directly connect to the series and that it follows up from the movie. So we have like a timeline. The movie is first timeline wise, then this special and then the series. There's also gonna be another special I think is coming in November, I wanna say. Um, that's gonna be, I think a holiday special. And that one might be a little more separated from the others, but I, I don't know. We'll just have to see when that comes. Um, but yeah, so so what this comes down to very clearly, as you can tell, is that I'm concerned about this series um, and, and about this special specifically right now. Um, I, I'm, I'm hoping that it proves me wrong, but there's a lot of concerns from the trailer and the, the changes they've made that just make me really unsure what I'm going to think about this. Now... I'm going to go into it and I'm still going to give it just as much of a chance as I give to everything. But hopefully, hopefully I end up loving this. Uh, we'll see. We shall see. Uh, but we're just going to get this started and find out. So when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black and then it fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the special. So that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. This was good. I, I, I really enjoyed this. Um, I, I talked about in the pre-thoughts how I can usually excuse animation issues or, or lesser animation if the story and characters are good and the story and characters in this were great like this actually quelled some big fears i had after the uh the youtube shorts uh in regards to their characters they felt like they did in the movie in this it, it felt like how they in my eyes at least <laughs> should be based on how the movie introduced them um 
the series def or the the YouTube shorts rather definitely uh, exaggerated their personalities and really focused on like one side to them. But this thankfully went back and showed the complexities of their characters once again. Um, so I really appreciate that. Um, now let's talk about this dragon. Because there's a notable continuity issue here that I don't know if they're going to touch on at all. But this takes place in the same world, same canon as G4. We know this from the, from the movie. So why does this baby dragon have wings? Um, dragons are not born with wings in, in, in the G4 canon. Wings are something that the dragons grow into. This was a major deal, a major episode for Spike. Him, like, getting to that point where he grows his wings. That was a major episode. And a really good one, too, by the way. Um, not the best, but still really good. Um, but this, this dragon, this baby dragon being born with wings makes no sense in that regard. Why was it born with wings? Because it, maybe it, it absorbed some of the magic that was spread around during this ordeal? That's the only thing I can think of that would make any sort of sense, but I, I feel like this is something they need to go into for continuity's sake. Just because this this does take place within the same canon as G4, I feel like they have to touch on this. Ignoring it at this point would just be, it would make it a continuity error. And a major one at that. Um, it, it may not seem like a big deal, but stuff like that adds up. And it, it, and it, and it hurts the overall quality of things. Because it's distracting. Continuity errors are distracting. So, we'll see how it goes when the series comes. But, another thing is, why do we need this? Like, the dragon, the dragon thing kind of feels tacked on here. It, it, it doesn't feel entirely natural to everything else. Like, everything else that was in this special was great and fit and made sense with, it, with everything that was going on. But then they just kind of threw in the dragon, and it, it genuinely felt just thrown in for the sake of having a dragon character. It's like I understand the idea that all the other races that we saw in G4 have also gone their separate ways again. That no one, no pony has seen a dragon for so long, and uh, that can obviously extend to griffins and um, sea ponies and everything else as well. All of these races have kind of been separated for so long. So I understand the idea of wanting to bring, at least to some degree, that that idea back into things. And even starting with a dragon isn't a problem, but they're basically just retreading Spike, I feel, with this. Um, like, that's very much how it feels. Even though it's not the main, the main, main character this time, with, like, you know, Sunny being the main character equivalent of twilight this time it's hitch who's more like the fluttershy um which does kind of make sense which does work in that regard but why is this needed it just feels like again it's just retreading spike just to have another spike like character in the series and, and the thing is, though, with this dragon being newly hatched, there's not going to be that character personality with with the dragon. So it, it, it's not going to have that kind of purpose that Spike had in Friendship is Magic. Instead, it's it almost feels like the idea is like having Hitch almost take on this parental role. Which, again, I think actually works for him. I think Hitch is, is, would be great as a parent. So I, I, I'm actually okay in that regard for things. But it, it just feels like that's the only reason for this. And, and I don't feel that's enough, personally. Um, 
And the animation is my only other real issue here. The animation at certain points looks okay, even good. But then there's some points to it that look really fucking bad. Like, did you see those smoothies? The texture and animation on those smoothies looked atrocious. Like, absolutely fucking atrocious. As in, they did not look like they even fit within the context of everything else around them. It's it, it, It'd be like if you copied and pasted um, a, a poorly made um, amateur texture onto an excellent um, pro studio made level uh, background. They would be so jarringly like separate from each other that they don't blend at all that's how those smoothies look they did it, they just it did not work in any way shape or form and there were some expressions while, while the expressions overall were good there were some points where it just looked weird like there were points especially where izzy was like being loud and stuff but her mouth was like really small did anyone else notice that and it, it just didn't like she was basically yelling but her mouth looked like she was like being very quiet and it's it's just like that makes no sense because it's like we've seen them open their mouths wide so it just makes no sense that they would do that like that's not even a budget thing like the budget thing is like okay it doesn't look as visually good or it doesn't move as visually good like you could you could talk budget when you're talking like oh when the when you see like Izzy dancing along as uh, as Pip is singing and all during that scene, it's like the way she's moving her legs and bending her knees and I hate saying that with ponies, but it doesn't look natural. It looks fucking weird, right? So that you can say is a budget thing. But this, not so much. This is just like a weird decision they made. The The fact that her mouth was smaller made no sense. And that's, that's not, again, it's not a budget thing. It has nothing to do with budget. It was a choice. And honestly, kind of the same with the textures on the smoothies. Like, they could have made that fit the textures of other stuff shown in this special. But they didn't. And that's not, that's not a budget thing. And, and even if it were, and I, I hate people using the excuse of budget as it is, because so many things have shown that that's not really applicable, or at least it shouldn't be. Um, for, for the biggest example that people tend to cite is One Punch Man. The first season of One Punch Man actually had a normal budget, yet it looked as if the budget was like massive visually it was stunning and it looked as if it had like this absolutely insane budget but no its budget was normal it was normal for a season of anime it's because the the people working on it put in the extra effort despite having a smaller budget they put forth the effort to make it look as good as possible proving that even with a smaller budget you can or or even a normal budget you can still make things look really fucking good. So it just, it, it feels like just an excuse at this point. With stuff like that being an example, it feels like an excuse for people to say, like, to use the budget. And, and not, a, not a valid excuse either. So that, that does annoy me. That does admittedly very much annoy me. Um... But everything else about the special I liked. Like I said, the characters were back to their how they how they were portrayed in the movie rather than their flanderized selves in the shorts on YouTube. Um, all of them felt like fantastic, and this this special focused especially on Zip, and really did wonders for her character. Like the specials did really not or the shorts rather on YouTube. I keep messing this up. The shorts on YouTube didn't really do anything for any of the characters to make them look any better or anything more special than they 
already were. In fact, again, it kind of made them look worse in a lot of ways. Um, but this made Zip look a lot better. It, made, it just really improved on her character, gave her a lot more depth, and made her more interesting. Um, and all the other characters in this were great, too. Pip, Izzy, Sunny, Hitch, everyone really did well. And even, even the side characters and, and even the antagonist, quote-unquote, uh, Posey, all of them were entertaining. And they felt natural um, to, again, where the movie led us in terms of how Equestria is currently. So I really like that. I really like how the characters are handled. And the story itself was good. This Maritime Bay Day celebration, low stakes and everything, but then you suddenly have the magic uh, glitching out. And so they're trying to figure out what that is, ending out in this big climax with a bottomless void opening up in the town square. And it's like, fuck, <laughs> Jesus, this suddenly got really high stakes all of a sudden. Um, And... By having everybody help each other out, Posey realized that she was just basically jealous. She felt that the Earth Ponies were shafted compared to the Pegasi and the Unicorns, when that was never true, but... And this is the interesting part. Now the Earth Ponies have new magic. The Earth Ponies have always had magic. This was very much made a point of, even at a, in, a, in a couple episodes of, uh, of Friendship is Magic, that the Earth Ponies... Their magic is cultivating the land uh, in a way that Pegasi and Unicorns literally can't. They literally did not have that ability. Um, Earth Ponies would be able to cultivate the land and do a lot of more hard labor easier because of their magic. It wasn't magic that showed itself in a way like the Unicorns and the Pegasi did. Um, but it still existed. Here, though, we get a new kind of magic for the Earth Ponies. Um, basically, chlorokinesis, which is fucking awesome. I, 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 and I'm really excited about this because I've always been a huge fan of this power set. Um, whether you see it in, like, Poison Ivy in the DC comics or whatever else, I've always been a huge fan. Uh, Amalia, Princess Amalia of Wakfu. Gotta mention Wakfu here. Um... Chlorokinesis, control and creation of plant life and whatnot, it has always just been super fucking cool to me. I don't know what what it is exactly about it that I really love, but it, it's just really, really good for me. So, to see that the Earth Ponies suddenly get this uh, new level of magic is really interesting, too. But the fact that it is this, like, chlorokinesis is just really fucking badass, and I love it so much. Um, the ability to just create and grow flowers and trees and stuff, and it's, it's, it's an advanced version of the Earth Pony magic that existed in G4. More than just being able to have that strength and the ability to cultivate the land in a way that other races couldn't, they now have the power to literally create plant life and improve on the earth and stuff and I, I i really hope that we explore more about what this what these powers can do in the series because there is so much legitimate room for for just amazing things with this um and, and then we had the introduction in this uh in this special of a villain. Um, and I want to actually, let me see if I can go back real quick and uh, I'm going to mute it, but I want to see if I can go find that real quick. It was a very brief glimpse. Um, we only saw it for like maybe 30 seconds. So let me see here. Okay. So we see this pony who has like this blonde wig and almost like these Rita Repulsa horns. Like, you know, Rita Repulsa from the Power Rangers. Kind of reminds me of that. She appears to be an alicorn, though. Um, Because if you look real cl closely, when it's backing up, like she's looking at the screen, it's backing up, you see wings. 
But then when it goes to her face, she also has a unicorn horn. So our villain is an alicorn, which is really interesting. She has this blonde mane. Her coat is like this uh, purple. It looks like it has two different shades to it, maybe three. Um, it's hard to tell because of the lighting. She has what looks like blue eyes and some uh, heavy eyeshadow as well. Um, she's very fancied up. So she may have some like tie to royalty. Even she like she's even sitting on a throne and like there's these like stained glass windows behind her. Uh, she also has at least a couple ponies with her, including this uh, uh, unicorn mare with uh, really pretty hair. Um, I'm, I'm just wondering what her deal is. Because she seems angry. Like, she seems angry and kind of crazy. And her eyes are also, like, when it zooms in, a little weird. But that might just be textures due to the lower animation. Um, I want to know what her deal is, for sure. She's clearly going to be uh, delved into in the series. So I, I'm definitely interested to see more of her. And to find out, like, who she is. Um, what if she has some connection to Celestia and Luna? Or even Twilight? Or Cadence? Any of the Alicorns we've seen. Even Flurry Hearts. Like, you could even name her. Um, what if she has some connection to them? Or even some relation to them? That would be fascinating. Um, I'm also wondering, speaking of that, how much G4 stuff they're going to reference in the series. Because there was, like, none of that here. Um, but it was mentioned pretty notably in the movie. Um, it, it, I mean, the movie opened literally showing the G4 ponies. So I'm wondering, like, if that's going to carry over into the series to some degree. Um, I'm very excited to find out, mind you. But I, I, I genuinely do wonder. Um, if it doesn't, as long as it's still good, that's what I'm hoping for the most. But I do kind of hope it does car uh, carry over, even to even if to a small degree. Obviously, it's, it's well, well, well in the future to where G4 is considered ancient Equestria, uh, as they say in the movie. So it's a long, long time in the future. So... I don't expect it to be like talked about constantly, but even if just here and there to be brought up, I, I think that would be good. Um, I'm definitely excited to see what they do if they do anything with this dragon. Um, if it is just to give Hitch kind of like this parental role over something, I mean, as long as, again, as long as they do it well, then I'll be okay with it. But I, I feel like there's more they could do here. Um, especially since we don't know why that Dragon Age, Egg, not Dragon Age, that's a game series. We don't know why that Dragon Egg was just randomly on the beach. There's a lot of questions in regards to that. And, and the special actually leaves a lot of things hanging. So I think there's a lot of things that they are planning to reveal in the series. Um, this was definitely more, even more of a kickoff point for the series than the movie was. Um... And the voice actors, I want to mention real quick, were all good. All of them did a great job, but it was noticeable. It was very noticeable that they're not the same VAs as from the movie. And again, Hitch and Izzy are definitely the most notable, the most uh, obvious. But it's it's very obvious that all of them have different VAs. It's a, their voices are not the same, and you can very much tell that. It's not even that close. So it, it does suck that that is the case. And again, I, I feel like they could have gotten a couple of them. Like, Kamiko Glenn probably would have done it. And, and she probably wouldn't have cost that much. I don't know. I just feel like... I just feel like they own, because they couldn't get everyone back, they just chose to go with a completely different cast. And, I don't know, it's just, it feels like unnecessary in a way. Um, also, one of the VAs, I actually want to look this up real quick, uh, to because one of the VAs is actually from something else, and I don't remember what it was. Um, Pony, make your mark. Um, I think it's Zip's VA. 
I, I I don't know exactly how to pronounce the the VA's name, and I, I don't want to get it wrong. I'm afraid to get it wrong. Um. Oh yeah, she was Priya in Turning Red. That's where I I, I knew the VA from. Yeah, Zip's VA in this is uh, Priya in Turning Red. She's the uh, uh, she was the she's one of May's friends. She's the one who has the glasses and is kind of like I don't want to say goth. She's definitely not goth, but she's very stoic. That's a good word. She's very stoic. She's into like the Twilight uh, equivalent in that series, but yeah, or in that movie rather. But yeah, she was Priya in that. Um, I, 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 I had found out about that. And I thought that was cool. Because Turning Red was, no matter how you slice it, no matter what you thought of it, was a big deal. It, it was talked about all over the place. And I thought it was fantastic. Um, I actually really liked it. I didn't react to it because I wasn't sure what I was going to think of, especially after the trailer, which made it look cringy as hell let's be honest but luckily it was actually really fucking good um but that's the reason i chose not to react to it um but i still very much enjoyed it and it, it is cool like i would not have i would not have guessed that based on hearing zip in this but yeah she did a great job in both of these roles nonetheless um overall i think that this was a a good kickoff to the series and it quelled a lot of my fears the anim the animation wasn't as bad as i thought it was going to be it was definitely a big drop a notable drop but it wasn't as bad as i thought it was going to be um the voice actors while very noticeably different it's like i can get used to that i i can get used to it so I that's not as big a deal to me there were some things that were very distracting that did look really bad, but honestly, they were few and far between overall. And again, I enjoyed the characters and stories to a degree that allowed me to genuinely really enjoy this overall. So I would, I would call this a success. I would call this special a success. Um, but we'll definitely have to wait and see for the series, which I think is coming in september or maybe that's november and maybe the other special I, I don't know i don't know obviously we'll react to it when it comes out um but in the meantime uh i would love to hear your thoughts on the first g5 special my little pony make your mark which by the way is also the name of the upcoming series uh so tell me your thoughts down below and thank you so much for tuning in for now i'm connie and i'm signing off See y'all next time.